Dear God. Mm-hmm. How's everybody doing out there? I'm trying to be like per- Chris Perillo right now. That's my man right there, Chris Perillo, you know? So, he like, he much vlogs every day. This is a new world. I mean, when you get down to it, it is... I do miss tech TV, but I think even they knew, if they were, you know, thinking about it, that the internet would basically take over and become tech TV. We are, the internet's tech TV, you know. I never really left where I came from. I was always that kid going on the Star Wars forums and then watching tech TV and watching Chris Perillo, Leo Laporte, you know, the multitude of various wonderful shows they put on. But now, I'm this 30-year-old guy going online, using the internet forums and so on, and I'm still watching Chris Perillo. You know, and of course, everybody from the old Tech TV days practically is still connected to the internet. So we're all still connected to each other. And it's a different world now, I'd say. Uh, welcome back. I prefer not to um, be in school. Today, this life I live now, yeah, being 30 does not feel, you know, the best. You are losing your stuff. You're getting older and all that. But I'm content with it. I've made my peace with it. I'm not having to get up and run around and go to school anymore. It's it's fantastic. I get up and I look around and I say, what do I want to do today? I make my own rules. I can't get a job for some reason. But other than that, my life right now is quality. I do what I want to do. Versus having to go to school and do a bunch of things I have no intention of doing. So it's not so bad. I make movies. That's what I do if you want to know. I'm something of a filmmaker. I would like to watch movies and I would like to create them. Problem is, I don't really know what I'm doing. And of course, uh, it's not real. You know what I mean? It's a hobby. It's not like it's, not like it's a, an actual career. If you do filmmaking for a career, I can imagine it's, it's, it's much more interesting. <sighs> And what I do, which is these little, this is, I'm working on movies right now. I make, I made like a couple hundred dollars for my last job, and now I'm, I'm using that money to buy props, to buy costuming, to buy all these little things I can use to make these films that I make. And stick with me if you want to see something cool. This thing I'm working on is gonna be all right, man. It's gonna be pretty cool. If you want to see something cool, stick with me. Um, and I, you know, I've been on the internet a long time. I'll tell you that. I'm now 30. I started using the internet heavily at 14. It's been 16 years. I know how the internet works. I know how bad it is. It's bad. You have really bad things going on on there. And porn, of course. And, you know generally good people doing good things here and there as well and it's definitely evolved we didn't have facebook back in the old days hell i had dial-up back then what am i saying i actually literally just you know used the dial-up thing and you logged in and then you went to starwars.com you looked up new stuff now it's a different bitch man we do not live in the universe that i came from it's totally different now everybody's online Everybody has an internet connected device in their pocket. I could never see what was going on in the world a million miles in seconds that we can do now. Facebook has definitely become far more of a dominant force in the internet world than I could have ever imagined. You know, you figure, you know, forums exist and then they die and people enjoy forums or they don't enjoy them. But this collaborative collective of humanity coming together and creating an entire community of online world stuff, and of course the complexities of that stuff, is very much totally different than I could have foresaw. You know, I went on the internet as a little teenager, and now it's much tougher to be on the internet at 30. It's much tougher. You do indeed have the complexities of the adult world, you know, being an issue, you know. There are people out there who just want to shoot you dead. 
there are people who are like, you know, there's a Stormfront message board where you you black ass goes in there, you're gonna have trouble. You know, it's a it's a complicated thing to get older and live in this world as an older person. So it's harder it's hard to use the internet as a kid. It's even worse when you get older because now people are saying to themselves, We can kill you. You're not protected by any laws. There is there is the you know, nothing stopping us. Understandable. I understand that. I've been people have been trying to kill me all my life. That's why it doesn't bother me. You go to school as a kid enough, you get beat up, you get shitted on, you get crapped on. You come to you come to the realization that that's never gonna end. So you just kind of have to live with the fact that there will be assholes all the time, no matter where you go. So you just deal with it and you move on. For me, it's about just being an artist and trying to create your art and not worried about the complexities of people. And of course, everybody's got it. I'm, I come from a time where, yeah, somebody could have come into the classroom and shot everybody dead. But you didn't think about that. You didn't worry about it. You didn't put up a metal detector in a school so that, you know. But we live in a time now where everybody's worried about that next terrorist attack. Because, you know, that shit that goes on in those, other than those third world countries is, is right here at our front doorstep now. And so it is tough to get trust from people, you know. I am I am who I am. I am a guy who has never touched a breast in his life, and he's thirty, and he's looking at becoming way older and never having experienced a girl, his fucking body, and that's who I am. I am not a threat to you. I am not this guy who's a super freaking genius, who knows the complexities of the human psychology and knows how to twist and contort your mind with words I don't know that I'm that, that, that. just me somebody who's trying to understand life and is getting older and hasn't gotten a girlfriend yet that's who I am and I like to watch movies and I like to play with toys and I like to I like to make uh, my own films and fan edits of films these things I know and I'm a geek, and I'm a nerd, and I'm a Star Wars nut, and I, you know, I'm a weird person. You know, I will not lie to you. I will not sugarcoat. I will not create a facade here. There's no reason to. I don't know why everybody's so interested in manipulating everybody. There's no point. You're supposed to find a person that you love, fuck the shit out of her, and then start a family. I don't know why everybody's worried about con 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 you know creating issues and complexities and bullshit. It, there's no point. There's no point. Me, I like to have fun. I'm like that goddamn Monkey King. You ever see that? The Monkey King legend, Goku, Dragon Ball? It's a strange thing to have that influence as a kid. I had nothing. I watched Dragon Ball from way back when it aired in WB11 in the mornings. I started watching Dragon Ball then. I was like, this is a cool show. And then I started watching it on Toonami, of course. And I think there's a, there's a reason why I'm, 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 I'm inter, somehow interlinked with the Dragon Ball world. I think I am Goku. I am the Monkey King. And the Monkey King represents a person in this world who's the antithesis, the opposite of the negative forces in the world. He represents pure, blind positivity and that's just the way that it is he can't be he can't feel downbeat me I always feel like things are gonna be okay I don't know why it's just the way I am I always have this sense of yeah people are afraid of everything people are like ah eh, terrorism this and that but I do indeed get this idea in my head that there is beauty and good in this world and it's you know, beyond just a big tittied, wonderful, gorgeous girl, there's just fun to be had. Life is good. There's good food. There's good women. There's beautiful visuals. And that's, you know, I've had so much fun as a kid, I can't believe that I'm just going to get older and not have fun more. I don't believe that. I believe I will get a girlfriend. I believe I will you know, get money, get some sort of, you know, career. I believe 
I will just fucking be a normal person making normal money. And maybe even have a kid. I don't know. I love children. What's wrong with that? You know, I like the idea of kids. I like the concept. I like this idea that, you you know, you give a kid, a, you know, a better life than you had. You know what I mean? You do the things that, you know, you just basically give the kids everything. You know, you don't don't think about it. It's not a thought. It's not a, oh, we, we want to... You know, want to take time and take, you know, I've met some asshole kids, but I would never say, okay, I can't, I'm not going to give kids the world. I would never say that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, there are some kids that don't deserve the world, but I'm just saying, generally speaking. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't believe in the just this whole despair that we're in now. This, 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 this consistent despair. This world is terrible despair. No, no, I don't believe in it. I can't believe in it. It's not in my brain. My thought process doesn't go down that road. I've always been looking for the bright side of things. Even if you had to go to school and deal with school, I always thought to myself, well, that chick is freaking hot. If I have to get up and go to school every day, at least I get to stare at that on the bus. At least I get to check that out over there. And at least there's candy. And of course, the thing I liked most about high school was that they had really good pizza in the in the, uh, in the, uh, the cafeteria at lunchtime. I look forward to that shit. Other than that, I had no intention and I had no interest in school. It was nothing to me. So, here I stand. I'm trying to get a job. Not going forward. Weird things. I don't know why. But I think things are going to be okay for me. I'm not stupid. That's the thing about it. I mean, actually, you know, quite intelligent. Uh, a person of my magnitude potentially will somehow, some way, make money and, and live. Problem is, this world isn't really... Uh, it's bad. It's like everybody's trying to get something over on everybody else. Everybody. It's just... You can't just get an apartment and live your life and, and pay your rent. The, per the person's trying to make more money off your rent than he's supposed to. These jobs that you try to get, they're trying to pay you too little. So, it's horrible. It really is. It's not a situation where you're getting paid enough to get an apartment and do all the things you want to do. Everything's overpriced. Everything. So, there's no possible way that you can actually get anywhere in this world after your childhood's over. You're just stuck with no money, no prospects. No house, no no way to live, and it's a hard thing to try to get going. You know your your adulthood. It's tried trying to get that thing started. It's very tough because nobody cares, and everybody really is kind of like, yeah, this is a world. Of, this is an age of despair. We are not a situation where, you know, we hope for you to get a good life going and started. We're just gonna say fuck you and hope you don't get anywhere in life and that's it even though I've played by the rules and I've done everything society's asked of me so ultimately I have to conclude yeah this this is tough but I don't I don't let that be the driving force of my life at all it's just I'll find a way it's just it's gonna be very stupid hard to find a way you know stupid hard versus just doing things the way I thought they were gonna go you know, when you're a kid, and yeah, well, just get a job somewhere, diddly doodly do. I get a job, and then, you know, idiotic nonsense takes place to sort of kind of. Because what these, these, these jobs is that these people that do these jobs, they live there. This is it for them. They don't have no house for mommy and daddy to go back to. This is their life. They have to go to that job every day. So if they don't like you, where am I supposed to freaking go? I'm supposed to get a job. I'm supposed to go there every day and make money. That's the way this society works. But if you don't, you know, like me and you say, okay, well, I want to get this guy fired so he doesn't have to show up to work every day and bother me, then where am I supposed to go? You know? That's the thing I'm trying to figure out. You want me to go to university? And then what? There's professors, there's staff, the students over there don't like me. And they say, well, you know, get out of here. We don't like you. This this world is very much a small world now. Everybody's connected and everybody pretty much just never leaves each other alone. We all have exact communication with each other now. 
It's not like childhood where you can indeed leave someone behind in another grade and never see that person again. Things are very different now. We are up each other's ass every day, 24-7. Everybody's everybody's best friend now. It's kind of sickening. Um, um, you know, it's, it's bad. If you're a female on the internet, you got to be careful of that whole putting yourself out there thing because you will have a stalker. You will have somebody who's obsessed with you and they might do something really heinous. You know, we might hear about these female internet celebs suddenly disappearing one day you know it i think it's 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 all hilarious oh we're just joking and we're having a good time with the internet fame thing but you get the you know there are psycho sons of bitches out there you got to worry about that in, in the end and now that we have the technology to constantly be monitoring each other you will have that person who's like i'm gonna i'm gonna find you wherever you are I'm going to get at you, shit like that. It's easier now than it ever was in the past. I don't know why you want everybody in the world knowing your personal information. That's kind of not the point. You know, you shouldn't put your personal information out for everybody to know. And when you think about it, who the hell cares? You know, because, like, these are these are just random people on the internet. Who cares? You know, they're not celebrities. Not real celebrities. So... It really doesn't matter. I'm not going to hunt down uh, somebody who posts a bunch of videos on movie reviews. Nobody would do that. That's just really freaking stupid. Anyway, I'm going on too long. My point of this video is basically to announce that I am going to edit the Chun-Li film. And get that thing somewhat reasonably well done. Um, it's what I do. I love to take these things, these silly comic book movies and video game movies and try to fix them and make them work because I've watched so many of them you know like Spawn and Street Fighter I've watched them so many times now it only makes sense to me to actually turn them into what they should have been instead of what they are which is rushed poorly made films so that's what we're going to be working on next and I don't know what I'm going to be doing in the future but there's a lot of interest I've got 300 something people looking at my threads People have PM'd me for the TMNT links and the DVE and all these other things. And of course the Super Mario Bros. movie thing I did. So yeah, we're, we're getting places with this. I think that people are saying, yeah, we do want to see better versions of these these classic uh, guilty pleasure films. I think I might do He-Man next. Uh, if I can find some extraneous deleted material on that, I, I might be able to fix that film as well. That film is just... It's just a movie that... A lot... It needs a lot of work. It needs a shitload of work. You know? I don't know what you can do to exactly make that movie better. You know, the fight scene at the end was really not not done properly. Um, I don't think I can fix that. But... I don't know. I might be able to add elements from other films to kind of expand on it a little more make it seem more cool I don't know we are getting new Star Wars now which is hopefully gonna be good you know um I don't know they got the money to you know they got a blank check I'm pretty sure they know this movie is gonna make money it's freaking Star Wars um hopefully I get cast as Lando for the Han Solo film they already cast Solo I'm standing here and I'm wondering to myself I you know yeah I'm not an actor but yeah it is, it is kind of far-fetched really far-fetched they hired and they're not gonna hire but then again this is Lando come on this is not a prominent role in the film I'm pretty sure it's gonna be very much a in the background kind of thing he's just gonna come in we're going to say, oh, it's Lando, cool. And then it's, it's not going to be a big deal sort of thing. It's going to be, oh, you know, we have Lando as a, you know, a character in the film. But he's not going to be, like, seriously involved in the storyline, I'm pretty sure. It's just basically going to be whatever transpires to lead to Lando losing the Falcon in the hand. That's pretty much all we're going to see. And, of course, their, their, their friendship is going to be a part of the film. So, I'm... I mean, what's going on, you know? 
I'm, what do you want me to do? You want me to come over to Lucasfilm and start something? I'm I'm in the, I'll, 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 I'm here. You know, let's make the Han Solo film. Come on. I ain't gonna. I, you know, let's do it. Let's make a, let's make a shit pop, baby. All right. Um. Thank you for listening or re- watching or listening. I'll see you on the flip side. Mm-hmm. <laughs>